Good evening, everyone. It's very good to be here with you on Majesty TV uh, tonight. Uh, pleasure to be uh, in uh, the studio with uh, my brother and sister in Christ, uh, Reverend uh, Larry and Helen uh, Dorcano. And a pleasure to uh, be able to share a few words uh, from Proverbs uh, uh, chapter 2 with you in a moment. Uh, I'm going to share a, a devotional for a, a wee bit, uh, but if you wish to call in at the end, uh, you're welcome. Uh, as I'm live here at the studio, uh, the phone number here is 020-3374-160. I bring you uh, greetings from the brothers and sisters in Christ at uh, Tyndale Theological Seminary in uh, Bad Hoevedorp. We're just outside of the city of uh, Amsterdam, is where the seminary is located. We have some uh, 40 full-time students uh, from some 20 uh, different nations, and we've been in existence since uh, 1985, uh, helping to develop uh, Christian leaders, uh, not only in the Netherlands, uh, but in many places around the world. Some of you who might be here from uh, listening in from uh, Amsterdam, South Oost, uh, will know some of our graduates uh, such as uh, Dr. Moses Salagbe from uh, the Amsterdam uh, Bible Academy, uh, or uh, Reverend uh, uh, Rafik Osman, who uh, ministers at uh, Victory Outreach. And we're very pleased to have uh, these uh, gentlemen as involved with uh, the school uh, still stopping in uh, now and then, sharing a word uh, or giving uh, some advice. A pleasure to uh, work with uh, uh, these gentlemen, as well as many others uh, who have uh, come through the seminary since 1985. My word for you this evening uh, is this, uh, very simply, uh, pursue wisdom. Pursue wisdom. If you can hear me and see me tonight, that's the one word I'd like to leave with you. Pursue, the one word uh, I'd like to leave with you tonight, uh, pursue wisdom. People pursue lots of different things in life. Some pursue popularity, finding as many friends as they can, uh, building up uh, social networks, uh, that as many as they uh, can, uh, so that they can be popular. Some uh, pursue money, getting more and more euros, more and more dollars, more and more pounds uh, so that they can add it to their bank accounts, uh, so they can invest it in greater things. Now, these things can be sought, but it is by far and away better to pursue wisdom. Uh, that's what the uh, writer here in the book of Proverbs has left us with. Um, this is Solomon writing uh, many years ago, a very wise man, and he repeats, regularly throughout the book, if you can get one thing, get this, pursue wisdom. If you have a Bible in front of you and want to open up to Proverbs chapter 2, I'll just be uh, walking through uh, this section of scripture for the next uh, few minutes. If uh, for some reason you could uh, even uh, read it in the original language, you'd note this, that every single verse within Proverbs 2 begins with a new letter uh, in the Hebrew alphabet indicating that if you pursue wisdom, then you get um, the entirety of the rest of uh, the blessings and benefits uh, from it. So just by reading Proverbs 2, we recognize that there are many, many benefits if we simply pursue wisdom. Note how, uh, the, how we should pursue it, Proverbs 2, verses 1 through 5. Reading there, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You note how this, the search was to be like, seeking it as for silver searching for it as for hidden treasure. That's not a passive uh, search, not letting it come to you. This is actively going out and pursuing it. And indeed, Solomon uh, encourages us to seek wisdom in many other portions in Proverbs, such as Proverbs chapter 4, where he will say, Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts, do not forsake my teaching. Listening, hearing, treasuring God's word, knowing how to apply it, this is what we ought to pursue. If you were to go to another section of scripture, you note how very, very valuable it is if you seek a greater understanding of God's word and how to apply it uh, in your heart. For example, consider Psalm 19 verses 7 through 10. 
These verses read as follows. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. I'm sure you're well aware of people who have left their homes in pursuit of gold. You know people who have given up everything, moved house, uh, sold everything they had just to be able to find gold so that they might have this great and uh, valuable commodity. In fact, if you go back through history, you might even know that uh, people left Europe, in fact, went to uh, what was called the Gold Coast of Africa. In the 1500s, they left homes, they left families, and sailed in ships that we wouldn't imagine sailing in at all today. They braved high winds, and waves, and then pirates. They settled in areas in the west coast uh, of Africa, and their mined gold in a climate that they were not used to. They gave up a lot just to seek gold. What were some of those nations that went to seek that gold? Britain. Portuguese, the Dutch, the Prussians, the Swedish, and the Danes all left their homes to find gold on the west coast of Africa. And of course, it was a very valuable commodity for them, not only for decoration, but also uh, for monetary investment. Of course, we know this area of Africa today as Ghana, right, where the country of gold is. People have done so many things throughout history just to acquire precious metals. But Proverbs, too, asks us to seek wisdom more than we would seek gold. Psalm, one, Psalm 19, Proverbs 2, searching for it more than if it were gold or silver or hidden treasure. Going out and actively, aggressively look, looking for it. This is how we should pursue wisdom. Well, you might be saying then, if we're going to be searching for it uh, so greatly and so intently, will we find it? It's a reasonable question. Many people left home uh, seeking gold and silver and never found it. But what does it say in the Proverbs? If we seek wisdom, what will happen? Proverbs 2, verses 4 and 5 tells us, If you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge, or in other words, the wisdom of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, Proverbs 2, verse 6. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the ways of his saints. As we seek, so shall we find. God wants to grant us this wisdom. What benefits are there if we grasp a greater understanding of God's Word, if we grasp a greater understanding of how to not only know it in our heads but in our hearts? Well certainly one thing will become clear is that uh, unlike the world we have something that cleanses the heart and cleanses the soul. We have forgiveness because Jesus offered his life for us and if we seek for God's wisdom indeed we will find Jesus and we will find his forgiveness. We will also receive power for living because as we look at the scripture, once again, we know that the scripture enthuses our hearts with wisdom and strength and power for living. We can't find this in our world. Oh, sure, there are many people who give advice one way or the other, but it's only the Holy Spirit that God grants that gives power for living in this corrupt and evil world. If we seek and pursue wisdom, we will find it, and we will find forgiveness as well as power for living. But if we keep reading through the Proverbs, through Proverbs 2, we'll find something uh, else as well. If we pursue wisdom, then there are a lot of byproducts that come with it. Have you ever done this? 
you've lost something in your house and you're seeking for your keys or maybe a favorite in our house, um, the remote control to the TV. And you search for it and perhaps maybe you find it, but you find lots of other things as well, such as maybe oh, a, a pen that was a favorite of yours, a, a lost game piece uh, that might have fallen behind uh, the couch. If you seek for wisdom, so too will you find many other things beside wisdom. Proverbs 2 verse 5 tells us that if we seek wisdom, not only will we find wisdom, but we'll find the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the respect and the appreciation for the great creator of this universe. The respect and appreciation for the one who created our hearts. The respect and appreciation for the one who saves our souls. That is a very, very valuable commodity of which to have. Of course, many in this world don't understand that fear and respect that goes with the Lord of the universe. But as we pursue the scripture and as we seek for wisdom, indeed, we understand God's ways in this world and we end up fearing and respecting the right one. It's a very valuable benefit. What else might we find if we are seeking for wisdom? Not only will we find the fear of the Lord as well, but we'll also find direction. We'll find direction. For once again, there are many people who give direction and advice in this world, but it won't be true direction, not like what our Lord can give. Note how knowledge as well as direction are given in Proverbs 2, verses 7 and 8. There we read, He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. The paths of justice, the ways of his saints. Uh, people walk around in this world looking in, uh, for all sorts of things. How good it is to know that our Lord can give direction as we pursue wisdom. Reading further in Proverbs 2 verses 9 through 11, he says, Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart, and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you, and understanding will guard you. I'm sure you can say that there are a lot of decisions that need to be made in this world. Maybe there's a new job to make a decision about. Should you take this job? Should you take this extra responsibility? Should you stay where you are living currently and move somewhere or move somewhere else? Should you be friends with this person? Should you invest in a repair on your house now or wait until some time later? Sometimes as we read through the scriptures, there become very clear answers to those things. At other times, uh, the answers are less clear, but if we have the scripture and the wisdom of God in our heads and in our hearts, it will direct us and point us in the right way. And it will help us do this rather than do that. By pursuing wisdom, it will also help keep us from wrong company. Did you notice how, or well, you will notice as we keep reading through Proverbs 2, that as we pursue wisdom and as we seek it, we will be turned away from evil people. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. There we read, it will deliver you from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech, who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. We live in an evil world where there are many people who don't necessarily have the greatest and best intent in fact, just this past week, we were uh, aware of this as our family, as uh, uh, there was this bombing that took place uh, in the city of Boston. Several years ago, my wife and I lived uh, in Boston, and we actually watched uh, the Boston Marathon, not too far away from where those bombings were. And we had friends, actually, in the area of Watertown, where this uh, great uh, manhunt uh, took place. And, of course, they apprehended uh, the culprits just uh, a couple days ago. 
Well, one thing of interest as I was following the headlines on this is uh, when the suspects had been released, or at least the pictures had been released, is people were commenting at, at least uh, that they seemed like uh, positive people. They seemed like they had smiles on their faces uh, at times. But, you know, a smile on the face is different than one who has good heart and a good intention. And as we immerse ourselves in the wisdom of the scripture, it will help us tell who is a person to be around and who is a person who might not to be around. Because you can find out who, so, who is trustworthy and who is not. Reading the scripture, pursuing wisdom, gives us understanding so that we might associate and be with the right person. Many of you may know that the book of Proverbs even ends with, what is the right person to marry? Proverbs chapter 31 gives a number of qualities of what is a good wife, as opposed to one who might not bring blessing. How important it is not to be deceived by the, the things of charm or beauty, but to rest in one who fears the Lord. I've now been married some uh, 24 years. How pleasant it has been for me as a husband and, a, and as a father to be married to somebody that I can trust, whose heart is in the ways of Proverbs 31. Immersing oneself in scripture, immersing oneself in wisdom, helped me to pursue who is a good companion to be with in this world. And certainly, I would wish that for those of you uh, who are listening to me right now. If it's not a husband or a wife, at least uh, perhaps good friends uh, to be around. Pursue wisdom and it'll be clearer. That protection keeps us from evil people. It also extends to immorality. As we keep reading through Proverbs 2, 16 through 19, we read there, so you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, that is if you're pursuing wisdom, from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her path to, to the departed. None who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. Likely don't need to tell you about how immorality is in the rise in, in our world and even here in Amsterdam. But pursuing wisdom helps to evaluate who sh you should be with and who you shouldn't. Don't be deceived by somebody's eyes or their smile. Instead, find truthful companions to be with. Pursuing wisdom keeps us from the forbidden woman. Well, these are some byproducts that come just by pursuing wisdom. But note uh, one final thing that comes as a result of pursuing wisdom too. And here we are at the end of Proverbs 2, verses, now reading in verses 20 through 22. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inha inhabit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous will be rooted out of it. If you pursue godly instruction and study and wisdom, what is the result? You'll be kept to right paths, the paths of righteousness, inheriting, in other words, in finding the right place to dwell, and you'll gain integrity, a soundness of soul that is reliable, a very good and very real byproduct of finding and pursuing wisdom. In other words, you will find life itself if you pursue the study of Scripture and how to apply it in this world. It will be life for you. It's important that we take a moment and just realize uh, the, how the writer of Proverbs uh, was writing this years ago. He wasn't writing it in Amsterdam where we get uh, a lot of uh, rain and water and we have a lot of canals. He's writing in desert climates. And in the desert, it's very vital to have a fountain of life. Wisdom, as Proverbs 2, 20 through 22 tells us, is a fountain of life. If you have a fountain of life uh, in the desert, you can build a city. You can build a city like those found in the Promised Land. You can build a city like Cairo, which is on the Nile River, which is also a fountain, a stream of life. Cairo has now six million people. It's in the desert, but it's in the desert where there is a source of life, a fountain of life. 
Where is wisdom to be found in an arid uh, climate? Where is life to be found in an arid climate? It's found with wisdom in God's perspective, listening to his word, understanding it, pouring over it in your head and in your heart, thinking about it. There you will find wisdom and there you will find life. The word for tonight is very simple. Pursue wisdom. Pursue it as if it were the greatest value and the greatest commodity of all. Not only will you find it, but there you will receive many other benefits as well. The fear of God, direction, protection from evil people, as well as life itself. It's been a pleasure to share with you a few words uh, this evening here on Majesty TV. I certainly want to uh, invite you, if uh, you have the opportunity, to come visit uh, Tyndale Theological Seminary in Bad Hoovedorp. You're welcome to stop in. Welcome to uh, some of the classes that we offer, particularly on Tuesdays and Thursday nights uh, throughout uh, the uh, spring as well as uh, in the fall, as well as uh, some Saturday seminars that we offer as well. We hope that that would be an encouragement for your pursuit of wisdom. But even if we don't see you at Tyndale, I hope that you too will find wisdom and will find the fear of God and the blessing that comes from his word and life itself. May God bless you always.